Okay, so we are going to do an adjustment to the program while Dr. Margaret uh, is co being connected. I would like to invite our uh, special guest. Um, I am honored to give the floor to Robert uh, Bertram, Chief Scientist of the Uni in the United States Agency for International Development Bureau for Resilience and Food Security for his introduction remarks. Robert, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And it's just a pleasure to be with you all today. I can't see the You're whole audience, phone. but I know there are many friends there. And uh, so from all of us up here, we, we, we wish we could be there with you in person. So it was uh, maybe last month, Martin asked me to say some words today, and I was really so honored and touched. And then I thought about it, I thought, well, where do I start? So this doesn't work. What I did was I went back and looked at something close to 400 emails that Martin and I had exchanged over the last eight or nine years. And um, while it was, a, it was a great chronology of many things, I realized I was looking at individual trees and really I need, to talk, I need to talk about the Martin Forest, uh, the great forest of knowledge, commitment, and action that Martin's whole career represents. And we first connected when he was at Erie. And you know, he comes out of the natural resource management side, the, uh, uh, which, which is, was a surprise because you know people think of CIMIT in the CGIR as about crop improvement. But I think it's fair to say that you know, this was, of course, after many years of brilliant career at Wackening, and when he, again, really honing in on the systems issues, the climate resilience and so forth, he, he came to CIMIT, and I think CIMIT has ended up doing the best systems work in the system, perhaps, uh, you know, or at least among the best, and I, I give Martin a lot of credit, um, and, and, you know, when he stepped up into the new role, uh, at, as leader of rural agri-food systems for the one CGIR, I couldn't have been more more delighted because um, he he had gone through. First of all, he had been one of the real stewards of the creation of the one CGIR, herding the cats, so to speak. And I'm referring to the donors, but also others, board chairs. You know, the all of us that uh, have a lot to say. And uh, Martin did a fantastic job partnering with people like Melissa Wood and people all across the system and beyond it. And um, he has turned in that course of those couple of years, he turned the CGIR Ocean Liner a new direction. So it was very fitting when he was one of the captains along with Claudia and, and others to, to really lead that forward. And he's advocated all throughout for the importance of science at the global level, from partnerships with upstream universities and companies to NARS and to partners on the ground. He really gets the whole continuum of what it takes to change an agri-food system and create climate smart, environmentally sustainable, socially and economically sustainable and, 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 and impactful uh, work. So um, Martin, I'm just so grateful for all you've done to move the one CGIR vision to reality, integrates many of, builds on and integrates the strongest programs, including many at CIMIT, but all across the CGIR. And this is really helping the CG meet these 21st century challenges. I hope the strategic positioning will continue. In other words, this is not goodbye, it's au revoir. And we hope from your new post, and position, you'll be able to still be one of the strategic voices guiding us. And on a personal note, I, I want to say I've been so fortunate to count Martin and Ninka as friends. And, and I've even met a daughter and, and, and a grandchild, and just we've had wonderful times together. And, uh, you know, I, I also, on a personal note, I say that there weren't, you know, there were downs and ups instead of ups and downs, because I, I know, Martin, you, we had, you had some health challenges, but you came back. And then life just blossomed with the beautiful grandchildren and family. So it's been wonderful to be a friend and partner to you throughout. And uh, I, I just, the last point is that that dinner invitation for you and Ninka still stands, no expiration date. Thank you all. Look forward to your comments. Thank you very much. We appreciate Robert for his kind words. Thank you.
Now we would like to invite Beth Bechtel, Deputy Director General at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States uh, or the United Nations, AFAO, for introduction remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, and I have a feeling, um, Martin, you're going to hear a lot of the uh, same sentiments from a number of us. But let me just say that on behalf of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, it is really an honor and a personal pleasure for me to be here with you to wish you every success and happiness in this very well-deserved retirement from the CGIAR and what we all know are a number of next chapters for you. In many of Martin's leadership roles across research organizations, he has played a fundamental role in bringing farmers to the center of solutions. And I know many of you will know even better than me. Um, Rob, I don't think I have 400 email exchanges with Martin, but I think we've worked on some really important things together. His contributions to the development of the one CGIAR and contributing to the 2030 research and innovation strategy as co-chair of the advisory group are just commendable. And this has really been instrumental to even our work together um, between FAO and the CG centers. We are working to develop a new framework together under the one CG system, linking our divisions, our regional offices and the research centers. And this couldn't be done without the leadership and the vision and the commitment of someone like Martin. And Martin, I just would say, I have been so impressed by your wide ranging experience and knowledge, but very selfishly, your willingness to say yes to things that matter to you, or at least the things that I've asked you to partner on or to collaborate on. And I think sometimes it's more about saying yes uh, to things when you know there's a role that needs to be filled and something that really needs to be shared. You served as chair of our technical advisory panel and co-chair of our steering committee for our very own first ever global conference on sustainable plant production. And Martin, we profited from your experience and I would also say your patience uh, sometimes. You and I, I know, navigated a lot of different voices and a lot of different points of view. And that is something that I deeply, deeply respect about your leadership style. You were also a member of FAO's Science, Technology and Innovation Steering Committee for last year's Science and Innovation Forum. Um, and I think this was even a first for FAO. So jumping into it with us wholeheartedly and enthusiastically um, was really deeply appreciated. And I know it doesn't end there. There are probably countless other commitments that a number of my FAO colleagues have all looked to you for, for sharing your knowledge and sharing your leadership. And it, again, is really very much appreciated. So Martin, it's been a real pleasure to serve alongside you on so many of these different efforts. You always brought professionalism and your passion for creating a better world for everyone, and especially for our farmers and for those who are most vulnerable. And to echo Rob's point, you have always prioritized making science and innovation accessible to everyone. So I hope, and I'm going to go so far as to say, Martin, that I'm expecting that this is not our final collaboration. Um, Martin, the world needs more people like you. And so I hope that we will continue to build on what we have accomplished together and continue to promote sustainable plant production and resilient agri-food systems, because we know we need to do that to meet the ever increasing demands of this world with far fewer of the resources than we have today. So I look forward to continuing this work together. Martin, I can't thank you enough for the collaboration that we have built between our organizations. And so let me just say that on behalf of our Director General and all of my colleagues here at FAO, 
We appreciate your past contributions, but Martin, we really more excitingly look forward to what you will continue to contribute well into the future. All the best to you, my friend. Beth, for your kind remarks. Uh, now, I would like to invite Martin Croft to present the seminar Science for, Builder, Billion, uh, Science for Building Resilient Agri-Food Systems in the Global South, Past, Present, and Future. Please, Martin, the floor is yours. One, two, three. One, two, three. In the back? Not good enough. One, two, three. Otherwise, I will stand here, which I don't like normally, right? But it uh, seems to work now. Okay, great. Um, yeah, it's, um, thanks for inviting me. It's great, of all, always great to be back at Simit. Uh, you know, we spent six years intensively here. And uh, so I discussed also with Bram and with Margaret and said, okay, let's look back a little bit, but also with lessons for the future, I think, because we are now in the middle of the 1CJR process, but I think we can also learn quite a bit from what we did here at CIMIT in those six years, because that, these were turbulent years, and Neil, Neil knows about it, and Bram knows about it, and Lindwy uh, just stepped out of the board. Um, hello? gets more attention for it, right? So, so just out of the board when, when I came in, but uh, you were in, all, in the whole process. Um, and uh, so I would look, like to reflect, and I looked at my, my uh, photos, and I don't know with you guys, but I think I have more than 10,000 pictures from the last eight years in the 1CJR, in Simit, both. So visiting all the teams and everywhere and uh, getting really excited. And the fun things that we did as well. So I will share some of those slides and several of you, many of you were in those events as well. So it has been a long journey. I think they're still playing with the sound, right? I will just keep on going. I hope that you can hear it. So um, I'll show some highlights. Uh, but first of all, thanks everybody for the collaboration. It has been super intense more intense than my 10 years as rector in Wageningen, to be honest, because there's always something special happening, and with all the travel, it is really complicated. Now, in, in COVID time, it was even more complicated, because we started doing everything digital, which worked, but then your days become so intense, because there's no relaxation moments. You don't walk up for um, a cup of coffee or something. So, just some reflections, and I focus on the science, of course, but also on how to get it gone, done. Because it's not only about science in that sense. Now here, um, I was inspired in the early days in uh, 1990, 1994. I was at uh, Erie. I hope you recognize me. Uh, it's a little bit different um, uh, vision here, but uh, I'm the, th the third one on the left with a moustache. And this is the great Erie team I had in those days. This was fantastic. So I went back to Wageningen in several functions and so on. Ended up as Rector Magnificus. And then... Uh, at the end, because I was 10 years rector, and then you could stay on as professor and all kinds of things. But I wanted to go back to the CG because of the inspiration I learned at the Erie in those early days, uh, the impact of the science. Because uh, let me stand just outside of the camera, or the, the projector, because in Wageningen also I made a book on science for impact, together with many of the professors. And Wageningen has a lot of impact, to be honest. But nothing compared directly in farmers' fields as what we have in the CG. And the same holds for other science organizations. In that sense, the CGIR is extremely special. And of course, the last two years I've been working in the, in the one CGIR. Now, the first 100 days, I made a presentation after 100 days being here. And that was really fantastic because uh, it was an enormous experience and I saw the work behind Simmons Impact. 
and I, I knew Simit a bit, I thought, but the first hundred, uh, the first two years, I visited everywhere, and then you realize that hardly anybody has a good idea what the impact is of the whole organization. So I visited um, uh, several sites, and of course, this is uh, the team in, in Turkey, this is a young scientist getting an award, and the gene bank is still one of the special things in our organization, right? That we're all proud on, I've been pleading for core funding, whatever happens, that the gene banks are safeguarded. Um, in many places, everybody who gets here gets excited by it, and, and the beautiful campus, because not all the CG centers have such a beautiful campus as we have. I hope in the future that all our campuses are of the level that we have here. Who remembers this? Right? This was just, this was just crazy. Uh, we were here uh, one and a half months, and suddenly everything was white. We don't see it in the Netherlands anymore. This was hail. Uh, the children, many of the children, they were playing around because they have never seen snow or, or hail or whatever. But the key is also, it was also a very interesting experiment for science because we saw with all the maize varieties, some maize varieties were completely gone and some maize varieties were surviving. So a sort of serendipity in that sense. So um, from everything that's going on, you can learn something. And then Science Week. Marianne and I, Marianne and I decided two months or three months before I came, shall we do Science Week when you have been here half a year or directly? And basically we said, let's do it two weeks after I'm here so that you can meet all the scientists from the different countries and so on. Super important, and this was, um, this was very exciting. And several of uh, the board members here and, and others, of course, are on this, uh, this beautiful picture. Now, what I wanted to do and what we did is basically talking together and listening to everybody uh, what needs to be done in terms of the science, what needs to be done in terms of institutions. So, uh, basically setting the priorities for a new strategy. And that worked out super well. Uh, very, people in the CG and in CIMIT are really, especially the scientists, but also all the others, very inspired because it's, it's about something. So we discussed, for example, G by E by N, genotype environment management interactions, should be expanded with social sciences as well. But also about seed systems, and also very important, also with the steps of the one CGIR later on, talking about systems and not just commodities. One of the things that I felt when I came here, leading Wageningen before, and you don't talk about one or two crops, is that our mandate was just maize and wheat. That, doesn't, that didn't feel well, to be honest. Because, you know, we have to make sure that we are thinking like farmers and they grow more crops or they have livestock as well. And that's why the one CJR is really helping. But also I'm very pleased that Simit now also has broadened um, uh, the scope when uh, the Gates Foundation came with the Avisa project uh, to also start with millet uh, and groundnut, um, so, and so on. So basically also big data, genomic selection. So a lot of these discussions were going on, and not just about research, also about organizational change. CIMIT had been growing very fast, so the corporate services didn't grow and didn't get organized so quickly as well. So institutional changes, what was necessary is one summit. Very clearly we had silos within the organization. You have the maize, we have the wheat program, corporate services and agronomy. And they were sort of silos in those days. Um, strong, stronger staff representation in uh, the staff committee, one staff committee, IRS and LRS. So this was the first staff committee uh, two years later. More transparency and also donor intelligence, better policies. We had more than 100 policies, but they needed to be improved. Projects should not compete with CIMIT programs, etc., and uh, mentoring and staff development, and also harassment. We did a survey. It was not okay everywhere. Things happened that shouldn't happen. So what we did had big action. Uh, I went to all the offices myself to discuss with the staff how we could solve those issues and problems. So we were really having a very open and fair discussion uh, there. And then, of course, uh, understanding what's happening in the field, building, building together a new strategy. Of course, I had board meetings. This is one of the first boards uh, that we had with uh, John Snape as leader. 
And uh, this is two years later also the Minister of Agriculture of Mexico was there, but also in fields, in farmers, in the 13 countries where we have offices. So a lot of experiences. This is, for example, in Bangladesh with uh, the women, we had special discussions, um, and also looking in the field what, uh, what the impact is and what's going on. Yeah, and then exciting first two years, I said it already, observations of Simmons' great work. Because it really takes time to see in farmer fields what's happening. We didn't have the impact studies yet, and uh, that's what I wanted uh, to have. So uh, farmers benefit at scale from breeding and agronomy. We knew it, but not really measured uh, well in detail. Novel and applied science and dedicated staff in strong partnerships, particularly the national systems. And the most important issues to address uh, was basically one SIMIT strategy, that we operate as one organization. Corporate services together also with the programs. Um, I thought we could do in one or two years, forget about it. These type of things take time. We took, I think, in six years at least, very step by step by step, we started getting more together. And now, of course, uh, Bram and the team is now taking this further. Better corporate services need for improvements. That was really necessary. And the exceptional impact, I also wanted to may have document where we can really show, where we can give numbers. And we got them. And uh, need for continued innovation in science, of course. The new strategy, uh, we developed this, and I still see this as an important thing for the whole CJR, scientific excellence, that's the core business. Uh, impact through partnerships and capacity building. And we put one summit in the middle because that was really uh, necessary. And uh, the one CGR process is interesting. Uh, 2020 to 2021, the opportunity to, breed, to broaden the mandate of the centers, still working together, and um, an opportunity for real systems work in the regional integrated initiatives. That came basically also from the integrated science that we do at SIMIT. Um, and uh, I'm very happy that we got it into the strategy. And currently, an update, updated new SIMIT strategy that the team here is working on is building further on those type of components. But also that we have integrated programs, not just breeding, not just agronomy, and not just policies or whatever, but integrate. That's what farmers uh, really need. And here the mission was still maize and wheat science. Right now we can broaden it. And then one summit for core values. We discussed at length in the MC uh, management committee what are our values. That's of course teamwork, integrity, and excellence. But very important here, respect. Because that was not everywhere at the right level, to be honest. So that's why I went everywhere to all the teams in all the countries and you know indicated to the people that they, we have to treat each other you have your colleagues as you want to be treated yourself. That's a very simple thing, but if you do it like this, then you get much further. And I think that's had a major impact, but you have to keep on working on this. That one's going faster, so that's, uh, and that's handy. So, one summit, what is it? So, some things that we indicated there is raising awareness of the values, getting teams to work together. We stand together as one organization, the branding, uh, a new culture in the organization which is open and transparent, no, not playing games, not competing internally. These are all things that we still can do now, have to do in the 1CG. It's very similar. And we have to keep on being open and transparent on those and applying standards processes across the organization. So we base it also on the thinking that we did the same in Wageningen, to be honest. And now do we do this in the 1CGIR. And then, in terms of the corporate services, uh, I came up with this crazy acronym, FISO, but that's also good to keep on reminding it, because the corporate services were all separated and sometimes duplicated in the programs. It's also a little bit in the 1CG where we also have to bring these type of things together. And then, starting in simple have more focus, efficiency, efficacy, and service orientation. And then, we develop new policies, new processes, new systems, better support of the science. Now, in a 1CG, we have 12 of these centers, all with their own policies and things. So I said already a long time ago, let's ask internal audit which centers have the best policy for HR, which center or can we bring things together that we learn from each other as soon as possible 
because there are major differences. So I think there are ways, and Synod, we spent, I think, more than $10 million in the six years I was uh, leading Synod uh, in improving this. But let me tell you, I learned a lot here because developing new policies and new processes is not simple. I knew it from Wageningen, but um, in the CG it's even more complicated with all the international rules and regulations. What we did, for example, have uh, a team of Deloitte going to all the offices to see if we are still complying with the local reg regulations. Of course, and we solved all the things straight away, and uh, that's very important. Now, the impact studies came first for wheat, I think, in 2017, and for maize it came later, and this is really spectacular. And I hope that everybody in the CG also realizes it, because many people say, ah, we have to diversify crops. Of course. But still, these core crops, maize, wheat, and rice, and potato, they are so important, we have to keep on innovating. And the fact that we have an annual benefit estimated of 3.5 to 4 billion just from wheat is amazing. And we call it genetic gains, but I call it genetic gains, agronomic gains, and policy gains. Without better, better agronomy, without better policies, subsidizing uh, fertilizers and things, you don't get it as well. In maize, it is now estimated that to get with ITA at 1 billion per year, which is amazing. So, trained many, many uh, uh, experts, and of course, 50% of the maize and wheat in the developing world is based on our varieties. I've been asking as uh, managing director of RAFs to have such data from all the different centers. We don't have them yet, so we need to conduct such studies for everything. For our funders, this is very important to build more confidence in what we do. And this was, I think, the highlight. Simit 50, I was lucky. To, uh, in 2016, we had 700 people on this campus from all over the place, four ministers of agriculture from uh, Zimbabwe, from uh, Pakistan, India, and Mexico, of course. And uh, this minister of um, Bangladesh, this lady, I think she was more than 90 years old. This was a very special lady. I visited her in uh, Bangladesh, and she, she said so, and sitting there, so, um, are you happy? Of course, I was pretty happy to be there, right? I was happy to see her. I'm not happy, definitely not. And she became pretty aggressive, because they had a problem in wheat, with uh, wheat blast, and they wanted us to solve it. And that's why uh, a couple of months later, she was here to see if it was really happening. And then I had a problem with this lady. Yeah, she, very respected lady, yeah, because really focused and targeted. We had meetings in, uh, in, the, in the city, in the hotel. And uh, early in the morning, we had two sub-meetings. So I thought, okay, because there's two sub-meetings, nobody will miss me. So I will just go running in the park. Just because you have to keep your conditioner going on as well. And, and Hans was there, and Persana was there, everybody was there. And then halfway I got a call. Martin, you've got to come now. Because the minister of Bangladesh is not going to start with breakfast when you are not in the room. I've never been running that fast. I wish I could uh, still do it, but uh, this was amazing. But very powerful people really uh, respecting Simit so much. And then we had something else in that day. Some of you may remember, normally it doesn't rain during the day here in Elbertown, right? Most of the time, never. And then we had this day, suddenly it started raining cats and dogs in a terrible way, and everything just kept, kept on going. So this was very amazing, that uh, experience uh, with all the team. Now, just uh, some side activities. Um, I was co-leading the CGIR reform 2015-2017. This is a picture I made from my place with all DGs, all board chairs, and all system council members. Washington, Rome. Washington, Rome. Every two months a meeting. That was really where we got again the system together because it was completely um, uh, separated, the system organization and the different centers. But it was a very nice experience. In the end, everybody signed straight away without any problem. Charter and framework. And then the Biza farm. I won't say too much about it, but of course I was also in the end uh, responsible for Biza. And basically it was fantastic. Three farms of the future on the farm. Perfect. The crops were perfect, everything. But 
the key was basically there were no projects and there was no organization of the administration. So I spent a lot of time myself diving in there, the board as well, to make sure that we could solve those problems. But then we had visitors, visits of the uh, chief ministers. This is the first one in Punjab. He directly said, I'm going to support you guys one and a half million dollars straight away. That was the first one. And then a couple of years later, I was in Bihar with uh, Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, former um, uh, Minister of Agriculture in India, and he came up with $10 million. So Visa was directly on the road. And Arun uh, Joshi did a very good job as managing director. And I called myself the DG because we didn't have the money for a DG. But uh, this started working pretty, pretty well. Another one, resource mobilization. A lot happened. It started with getting the new CRP's maize and wheat going, together with Marianne. I was very happy that we could get it going, and the excellence in breeding platform, continued strong pipeline, and in the 1CG we managed um, uh, the last two, three years to have a strong increase in portfolio funding. It was not easy, but I'm very happy that we are with the initiatives on the ground, it is working, uh, and a better working collaborative across uh, the different centers. And, of course, a nice increase in the portfolio of CIMIT. And, uh, of course, CIMIT is very well underway. That's why I was very happy also to focus completely on the 1CG, because CIMIT was doing well. And now, especially with the new grants coming in, uh, Bram, uh, it's really also with multi-center initiatives, um, which I take the freedom also of calling also 1CGIR, basically. Examples of how we should work. And with CIMIT, we have seen that I was surprised when I came in that funders trust the organization so much that they commission funding to the organization. And that's wonderful. Yeah, and then development opportunities for early career scientists. We have to do in the whole CG better. So what I did, I organized several breakfasts with the young scientists just to see how can we help you uh, to develop further in the organization. That was helpful, but you have to keep on working on this. And so with HR, a complete program was being developed uh, in that sense. And of course, in the 1CJR, there are many more opportunities right now. Yeah, and then social events. This, this one I like most. Children uh, graduating from uh, the school on the campus. Um, it was very exciting to see all these kids walking around. Um, but th this one was second, the run. We organized the run four kilometers around uh, the campus or eight kilometers around the campus. Um, I had to sit a little bit in front to make sure that I didn't end up too late in the whole team. But this was a fabulous experience. I think more than 300 people joined. So this was, um, was fabulous. But also all the other events that you see here. Um, uh, this is, uh, I think, one of the uh, New, uh, uh, New Year Christmas events where we had dancing and things. Really fabulous party time. And that's important as well. And then some science highlights. We all know this, we've seen these slides many times, but it's amazing with the genetics. I learned so much here at CIMIT. I knew quite a bit about it from Wageningen, but in CIMIT, what we did in terms of increasing yields with tolerance uh, and resistances, etc., is really amazing. I hope we, other crops, we can do similar things. And then, Drought tolerant maize. This is a tweet of Bill Gates being very proud of it. He visited uh, Pazana and the team. And this is a slide of myself in Zimbabwe. This young lady is having a, a, a cup of traditional variety here. And this is of the drought tolerant maize. I could hardly believe it. And we have other slides that you see. It's also per square meter impressive. I still use these slides uh, when I give presentations in the Netherlands and other places as well. It's so impressive and hopefully inspiring for other crops as well. And then the adopt, adoption, people are, oh, are they adopted? I use, this is my old slide from 2017, three and a half million hectares in Eastern and Southern Africa. Right now, it's more than six million hectares. Fresana says more, almost seven million hectares right now. So genetic solutions, this is thing, these are things that we need. And not many people in the world know it. And then pests and diseases, all the time new things come in, this was during my term. Wheat blast came in, 25% in uh, Bangladesh. We are wiped out the fall armyworm, as you know, and the maize lethal necrosis. Host plant resistance, biological control, all these kind of things are necessary. And it's amazing 
how fast right now we are. Look at this. These, these are convincing slides, right? I like slides where you don't, or studies where you don't need statistics. Uh, this is with uh, the normal maze and this is with uh, the tolerance. But the problem is it still takes four years to get there. And then to get it in farmers' fields is even more, more complicated. So that's why we need novel methodologies and things. And um, I will also be uh, chairing, chair of a board in a new institute in Wageningen where we are using modern, uh, no, newer technologies even to speed up in breeding with artificial intelligence, etc. Yeah, and this is also one of the most impressive things. First, the people. These are the people when I was walking around in, in the back of the, uh, the building, they were preparing all the seeds going uh, to different countries and these kind of things. Fantastic. Many, many people. But this is a picture I made and I'm using all the time. People cannot believe that we are sending sometimes 500,000 packages of seeds to uh, breeders all over the world. And this is in Svalbard, many of you may have seen it, where I had the honor to bring 12,000 new varieties or new lines uh, to the uh, permanent frost there in Svalbard and getting a certificate from the Prime Minister of Norway, who was there himself. But then also agronomy. What we are doing in CIMIT, and hopefully we in the CGIR later on with agronomy, this is crucial. First, small two-wheel tractors. I think we need to scale in developing countries. 500 million smallholder farmers, so we have to basically uh, make sure that we can uh, speed up. And small-scale mechanization is one of the tools. It will be essential. But also modern tools that are not just useful in Europe or in the US or whatever, but they can be used with smallholder farmers. That's what we do in, for example, India and near Mexico. This is an, such an example in Bangladesh where we were uh, invited to observe the first time that all the wheat was harvested with one small machine. One farmer became service provider, we helped him, and uh, he got this machine from, uh, from China, and the whole village was there normally with the whole village. It took two weeks for the 20 farms to harvest it by hand, and right now, just one day and it's done. done. So here you see Ninko also observing uh, these things. He's a farmer's daughter. But it was really amazing because everybody got so excited. They told me also that for the first time, they had time to do other things. So this is really, uh, these are game changers. Not everything is high-tech science, right? Let's be, uh, be honest and fair. And then IPM, Integrated Pest Management. Uh, very important. This is a slide from Prusama and the consortium that we have, it started with good agricultural practices, then all kinds of biological tools without chemicals to try to solve it. If that doesn't work, you have to scout and monitor and then you treat. So we have been working on this uh, with IATA, IATA they are very big on this as well, and FAO, and uh, we started developing the consortium for research for development for um, fall armyworm. This is how it spread very quickly, and we got here in Addis, in uh, the African Union, we got all these people together to think about what can we do? Can we work together? And this is going to be the basis for a new consortium for the, C for the whole CGIR with all our partners on plant health uh, R4D. This is also where we can, through the one CGIR, we have a new initiative, plant health initiative. We can play now a leading role in getting all the partners uh, together. Of course, science highlights, uh, capacity building, a lot is going on, told you already. And then some science highlights, multidisciplinary systems have been developed in many places. We have Simlesa in Africa, CISA in South Asia, and of course, Masagro here in, uh, in Mexico with the minister, um, here with the minister of Bangladesh, who is also very excited of working with us, and of course, getting presidential understanding with Peña Nieto, that um, uh, Inkemet. And then Bazaro, this is always spectacular on the board members have seen it many times, but this is also the basis for the regional integrated initiatives. Having going up to 500,000 farmers, this is the type of thing that as CJR we can also do it with partners. We have to scale it up uh, all together. And this is of course also something that uh, was an inspiration from the Netherlands 
but where we had a top sector approach, I was in the top team where we basically simulated public-private partnerships. Uh, really uh, getting it upscaled and those kind of things. And that's what we did here in Mexico uh, as well. And now also step by step in other countries. Uh, because for, um, uh, you, with extension you can go for a push, but of course it has to come through a pool uh, in all the countries where we work. But you can't do it all. When we were in Bangladesh, the Minister of Act uh, asked us, can you bring Kellogg's here in the, our country? But of course, that doesn't go so easily. And uh, this is the, the, the meeting of the um, agriculture chief scientists. They had in India, in Varanasi, it was last week, uh, they had the statement, one world, one family, one future. I was sitting there, uh, here you can see, I'm sitting there with, I don't know why they did it, because it's not a branding, but with one CGIR. And so I had an intervention, and Abraham as well, and Hung uh, from Ilri as well. So I also put here one CIMIT, one CGIR. Because everybody sees that we have to work together. These are the regional integrated initiatives, very successful, and the reporting, look at the dashboard uh, on the website, but we are reporting now on initiative that we never done with the CRPs. Really, really impressive. So the new research strategy, of course, you have all read it. Uh, this is the strategy of the CGIR. I co-chaired the whole process with Melissa Wood from ACER, and I think this is a real solid basis also for the center strategies as well, uh, fitting in there. And we had now three, 33 initiatives and 15 in my area, the resilient integrity food systems, and that has been a major focus for me in the last two years to get these on the ground. And that worked. So, and then we started, uh, the last year I was here at CIMIT also, to think what is now a good mission for us, going beyond wheat and maize. So to contribute to agri-food system transformation for affordable, sufficient, but also healthy diets produced within planetary boundaries in the climate crisis. And of course, the big crops like wheat and maize are essential to make it affordable and sufficient. Without the big crops, you won't get there. And this is from the dashboard, from the initiatives. For example, the regional integrated initiatives, one button, what are the innovations in what countries? And then you get this, and then you can click, and you can dive in what were the innovations, for example, in Brazil, in uh, these initiatives. Very nice stuff. Uh, have a look. Some takeaway messages. So CIMIT is, of course, one of the strong pillars of the CGIR. And I'm very happy that uh, the integrated framework agreement has been signed thanks to the board and thanks to management because I think, uh, as I tell, told many people also in the CGR, I don't think the CGR can do without CIMIT. Unique position, CIMIT and the CGR, we are on the ground in all those countries um, with science for impact. No other organization can say that. Only for policy FAO, but that's a partner, but um, I think this is very unique and we have to work further on this. Measure impact on contribution and attribution. So for the seeds, you can do DNA fingerprinting. And there we saw that in Ethiopia, 89% of the uh, wheat came from us. But basically, um, we need also to uh, move more to attribution, to contribution, because with the, with the varieties, you can say, this comes from CIMIT. In the future, it will be much more delivering by the national systems. That's also what our funders want. And then we have to measure impact also when there is just a contribution. Um, I haven't seen good examples yet, honestly, but also from our agronomy work and those kind of things, we need better data. Then it has to be demand driven. That we, I put that together with Melissa very strongly in the CJR strategy, that we are not just coming into a country and do the thing that we want to do. We have to make sure that we help solving the problems that are in the country important. So the evidence base, um, here uh, the investor partner, uh, funder preferences, the stakeholder demand, and then of course our assets, because we can't do everything. And then we build on that the initiative. So that's now done, and we have to review and improve. Thematic innovations, integrated approaches. Um, I'm very happy that we have both right now. And we need to be complementary to the NARS. That's a new thing. In the NARS, they are afraid that we as CJR are still a little bit like 50 years ago. That's the thing that some people have in mind, also some funders. We are not, I know, 
but we have to make sure that we show that we are really complementary to the NARS. Support building local resilient agri-food system. When I see that the World Food Programme has $10 billion per year to bring food to the different uh, the countries and problems, we have to build local resilient agri-food systems. So I think the idea that uh, Jürgen Vögel had, had um, I think at the Synod 50, he first mentioned it, the $2 billion for the 1GG. I think it's really essential and it should be possible, I think. And great technical uh, opportunities with big data, AI, and uh, etc. And of course, well organized integrated services like the FISO like, because if the support functions are not working well, there's all kinds of frustrations and those kind of things with the scientists. And I think so, CIMIT also has a good basis for it, and let's hope that it will be used. So, and this is why we do it. Farmers, for the future, keep up the good work and be inspired, and especially inspire your colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin, for a memorable, memorable presentation. And also we thank you for the stimulating, your stimulating speech. Now I would like to invite uh, Brown Goberg, CIMIT Director General, for his, sign, his kind intervention. Thanks, thanks Martin, and great presentation as always. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Rob. Rob, if you're still online, you're a very big supporter of CIMIT, and we know every time we call on you, you're you're with us despite your very busy agenda. And of course, thanks also to Beth from the FAO for uh, being with us and giving this great uh, introduction. In the meantime, I have received from Margaret her uh, speech notes. Uh, unfortunately, she had a personal uh, issue and actually she led the board meeting uh, from uh, abroad as the board members uh, well, well know, uh, but she could send her notes. So I am going to probably do not justice to uh, the delivery, but I'm gonna read uh, the uh, speech uh, Margaret, uh, Margaret had uh, prepared. Dear Martin, it is wonderful to have you and your family back at the Albatan campus. And I'm so sorry that I'm not there to honor you in person. Please accept my warmest wishes and gratitude. Martin's influence spanning over a decade with CJR is immeasurable. And I believe that as time goes, that his contributions will prove to be even more impactful. The seeds have been planted and the harvest is reaping great rewards and the dividends will prove to grow with each harvest. When I first joined the CIMIT board in mid-2019, I was very impressed that the DG was an esteemed professor from Wageningen University. In 2017, the National Geographic did a very large piece entitled, This Tiny Country Feeds the World. This quote, tiny little country is the Netherlands. The piece went on in depth about how the Netherlands has become an agricultural giant by showing what the future of farming could look like. This was another proof point that Simit was, in, an, was in, in incredibly good hands. And I knew that my learning journey would be incredible if I could keep up with this guy. The contributions that Martin has made to Simit and the world's most important system research centers grouped in the CJR of agri-food domain are impressive. And his legacy will live on here at CIMIT and across the CG system. The last three years have been incredibly complex for this system of research centers, as well as we all reached deep to reset ways of working with the hopes that we could deliver more impact at an accelerated pace. Anyone involved in this reform could easily say that the Raf Spiller was always ahead of the pack always leading the way. In terms of the signs under Martin's leadership, 33, 33 new thematic and regional integrated initiatives were delivered. Wow. At the core of every impact, excuse me, at the core of every impactful leader is heart and soul. This is particularly true with research organizations as we strive to create an environment where everyone can do their best work and solve complex societal challenges. I think heart and soul goes beyond treating others well. It entails a leader caring about people and culture to such a high level that smart actions are the norm 
deviations from standards are always taken seriously and in the process every team member is proactively supported as much as possible for peak performance and ongoing success. I learned long ago that people will remember you, Martin, not for what you say, but how you made them feel. And Martin, thank you for sharing your heart and soil, oh, so, heart and soul, always with CIMET and CG and making such a big difference in the lives of so many. As with anyone who has a heart and soul, we make tough choices through the seasons of change in our life. Our greatest legacy is therefore probably our family. Martin, I'm so pleased for you and your family that the season has come. The joys of participating in the journey of life for your family's new generation, your three grandchildren, may perhaps, perhaps be the best journey to come yet. With gratitude, respect, and thanks, Margaret. So with that, thank you, Martin, once again for sharing with the CIMIT community your reflections and recommendations on how to help us move forward in our shared goal of building resilient agri-food systems now that so many food insecure countries and regions are in one of the worst food crises of the past decades. You have walked us all through a very pivotal moment at CIMIT. And that coordination and transforming our thinking from production systems into broader systems and our food systems has changed the way CIMIT works. Let's also be honest, it took the organization some time to figure out how to address the challenges confronting global food systems from an integrated systems perspective. But I would say that uh, we were early adopters and promoters, thanks to you, of this approach and that we're currently leading the implementation in the global agriculture research and development sector. Your vision, energy, and enthusiasm were key to help CIMIT reach this position and become the champion of resilient agri-food systems initiatives that we are today globally and within the one CGIR. And talking about energy, those that have traveled with Martin know that he has a lot of energy. So sometimes when uh, I came off the, off, off the plane and Martin was saying, okay, where are we going? I was like, I, I actually wanna go to my bed and just sleep, but uh, uh, we would just go on, take the next meeting, meet the next secretary. Uh, so Martin, your energy has been remarkable. You should feel very proud of your role in delivering this transformation from researching agronomy and supporting extension systems to take it to the farmer, as Borlaug would have said to implementing integrated agri-food systems that uh, multiply our impact on global food systems through multi-layered partnerships, participatory and community-centered development efforts, and of course, applied crop uh, science. A sincere thank you for all you did for CIMIT and many of us here today with you. We went through hard moments too. When you fell sick, I think everybody still remembered how hard it was to get through that period. And many of us could say maybe that we contributed a little bit of getting you through that, but I know that the only reason that uh, it was possible was thanks to the unconditioned support of Ninke and the family to pull us all through those very difficult moments. So thank you Ninke, thank you family for being here and thanks for, I've seen it in action, I was a, a witness, nobody, like they say in Mexico, no me dejaran mentir, no, they don't let me lie, it doesn't sound that good in English, you were there, you were there always, thank you very much, you will be remembered. I think it requires an applause. <laughs> I would now like to open the, the mic for many other colleagues and special guests in the audience, physically and online, to say a few words. And I'm going to, ch to start with inviting the one and only system board chair, Lindewe Sivanda. to talk a 
about someone you have known for, I should start counting. Last week, this time, I was at the Ilri campus. I was introduced as a sister, as an aunt, and I was able to share the testimony that I interviewed Jimmy Smith in 2012, and I was there to introduce Apollone as the new DG. What I say to him is, you can never fail because those I interview always succeed and they stay for more than 10 years. Today, I'm here and I did interview Martin in 2015, was it? I was in the search committee and one thing that stood out was your passion for farmers and your passion for NAS. Simit was doing well at the time, but it needed closer link with the host government, but more important, take it to the farmer for real. And with your experience at Wachenichen, you stood out as someone who could do it. But what we didn't realize was that you would add a sherry on the cake and take it to private sector. So thank you for all you've done. I want to speak to just three things when I look at you. I see a walking dictionary of one CJR. When we met in Montpellier, you insisted on dinner with me. Little did I know you would hold me hostage for two hours, walking me through this journey and reminding me that I didn't nearly start in 2015. I was there before as a champion. So I hope today we can all embrace you as the walking dictionary for one CJR. And what that means, we won't let you go. That's for sure. <laughs> Dictionaries are a reference point. We go back and say, so when this happened, what was the vision? The second thing is you're a strategist. You've helped us develop the one CJR strategy and you still walk the talk. You are talking of your time in India and how you were able to raise the flag and say, yes, Simit, but Simit is part of a bigger family, which is one CJR. Thank you for that. Third, I want to speak to your anchor, Ninke. She reminded me today that um, of all the skeptics that I'm a farmer, she's my testimony. She's been to my farm in Zimbabwe. So, for those in doubt, you can find out. And there's a baby that was born when you visited and we've named them Simit and they now have six babies. So we are still funny. But when I met with Martin, if you want to know about tennis, take Martin to dinner. Half the conversation will be about his wife and how good a tennis player she is. So thank you for the support you've provided to Martin. Thank you for giving him to Simit but more important, thank you for giving him to one CGIR. We will continue tapping into his wisdom. We will continue tapping into his guidance, but more important, his passion and love for science and for wanting to always take it to the farmer. So thank you, Martin. Thank you, family, for holding his hand. So resilient, I couldn't think of a better person to drive rafts because that name, Resilient, shows that with everything you did, you bounced back better after the health challenges you had. So long life, happiness, and more innovations for one CJR. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Lindy Wen, for your admirable words. Now we would like to give the microphone to, uh, to Claudia Sadov, Executive Managing Director of the CGR for her kind intervention. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me. I'm so sorry not to be with you in person, but so glad to be joining this event, which like all of the best farewells is just full of mixed emotions. Um, I'll try not to be repetitive of all the praises we sing of Martin, but uh, let me do share uh, just some brief personal reflections and my thanks. I first met Martin about six years ago. 
when we were both DGs. I was a fresh DG and he really reached out to me as a new DG and he offered me with all of his signature goodwill and generosity, he offered me his extraordinary breadth of experience and insight on science, which we, we saw so clearly in today's presentation. He offered me, as he did to our chair, his unparalleled institutional memory. He even tried to help me learn how to pronounce Lakanenga. And Martin, I'm sorry, but that may still be the only clear failure <laughs> in your entire illustrious career. I'm working on it still, and I appreciate the effort. Here are some of the things, though, that Martin was much more successful in doing. As everyone knows, he was a member of the Consortium Award, which was almost a decade ago, just as the early ideas were beginning to bloom that eventually grew into our current reforms. He was then the member and the first acting chair of the System Management Board. The SMB was a very important step forward toward our more integrated CGIR, and it was a precursor of today's system board. Then he was a leader of a transition advisory group, TAG2, on research, which was the precursor of our research and innovation strategy. And now he is the inaugural managing director for resilient agri-food systems. He is the godfather of our regional integrated initiatives. It just always seems that Martin was always where the action was in CGIR. Or maybe the action was always wherever Martin was. Martin was part of the CB, the SMB, the TAG3, the RAFs. He's been involved in virtually every step of CGIR's recent history, and so very many of our acronyms as well, <laughs> all during what has been a truly challenging and I think very exciting phase of CGIR's history. But let me also say that at the first meeting I had with Martin and ever since, Martin has always expressed his particular pride and excitement about the unique work and history and legacy of CIMIT. One discussion with Martin, and I became a lifelong fan of Simmet, even before I had the privilege of visiting and seeing for myself just how right he was about this unique organization. But what I really want to thank Martin for, and what will really stay with me as I enter my retirement as well with my tennis wild spouse, thank you, we haven't met yet, but uh, Many, uh, many parallels between my husband and your love of tennis. What I will really remain with is not just what Martin has done, but how he did everything that he did with CGIR. His real focus on science and impact, his just infectious love of the science, so irresistibly excited about the work that we do you listen to him and you want to learn and you want to try and you want to innovate. He's just always bursting with enthusiasm, but he's always grounded in good humor. And he's always ready with what I find to be an extremely contagious laugh. Martin, you are a tremendous scientist, leader, and colleague. At this truly pivotal moment for CGIR, you have played a truly pivotal role. Working with you has been an honor and a privilege and a whole lot of joy. I want to thank you and wish you and your family all the best. Thank you, Claudia, for your kind message. Thank you very much for your words. Now we will present a message from Dr. John Snape, former, for, former Board of Trustees of CMIT for his kind message. Hello, Martin. Greetings from Norwich, UK. It was a great pleasure for me to work with you when I was Chair of the Board of Trustees at CMIT. When we appointed you in 2016 to replace Tom Lumpkin, we were hugely impressed by your energy and the infectious enthusiasm that you had for Simit's mission. And you were clearly the outstanding candidate that we were seeking at that time. 
But you did join Simit at a time when a number of changes were needed to stabilize Simit's finances and to provide new impetus to Simit's mission. You very quickly were able to analyze and get to grips with the issues and to set about making a number of positive changes. We recognized as a board that some of these were painful, but you handled them in a sympathetic and optimistic way for which the Board of Trustees was very grateful. You also came into the CG system in a turbulent time with yet another restructuring on the horizon, and you helped Simit steer a path through this so that it could continue its core mission of improving wheat and maize agricultural systems around the world. Working in the CG is never easy but your positive attitude to change and to solving problems helped up to keep staff morale and to keep them enthusiastic for CIMIT's mission and its positive contributions to world food security. I wish you and Ninke a very happy retirement and hope that you can find some more time to go sailing. However, I suspect that retirement for you will be to go out and to seek other challenges and tackling them with the same enthusiasm and energy that you exhibited at CIMIT. Thank you for your contributions to CIMIT and warmest regards, John Snape. Now we are uh, honored to invite Nicole Birrell former chair of the CIMIT Board of Trustees for, for, for her kind remarks. Well, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to be back and to see some familiar faces uh, on the Zoom, uh, also true to form. Uh, I'm up at some ungodly time here, but it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be calling in from Australia to, to say a few words about Martin. Um, as, um, uh, as many of you will know, I was a, a CIMIT board member. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Just Snape and Lindy Way were there in December 2013. Uh, I was there until uh, November 2021, and I was the chair for the last five years of that period. Uh, I was also involved as a, uh, a, at, at a system level as a center board chair representative and so many of the, uh, the memories that have been shared here in the last uh, little are memories for, for me as well. Um, I first met Martin when he visited uh, to attend the CIMIT board. It must have been in 2014 uh, as a member of the consortium board at a time. Uh, the, CIMIT, uh, the CIMIT board was, uh, was quite a, um, uh, a vivacious affair at a time. There were always lots of people walking in and out. Um, uh, it was, um, I think, quite a quite an eye-opener for, for Martin, uh, how he would work uh, back in those days, perhaps in a, um, in a less uh, disciplined fashion than, than would be the case today. But um, he obviously must have liked what he saw because a couple of years later, he, he did apply to, to join as, uh, as a, a CIMIT uh, DG uh, succeeding uh, quite a, an illustrious predecessor as well, and, and many more before. We, we did, as John Snape said, make um, an excellent uh, decision back then in June 2015. Uh, and I think CIMIT and indeed CGIR would not be what they are today if it has not been for that decision. So I was asked to to share some some moments I'm proud of, and I think that is uh, that is one of those early ones to do with Martin that I'm very proud of. Um, some organisational highlights that I'm also proud of, and that I was particularly uh, involved with as as a member of the board and, and subsequently chair, 
Uh, and the first one of those certainly was the, the CIMID strategic plan in 2017-22. Uh, and as it's, and I'm reading uh, what it's what it said at the time. It sets out an integrated approach of excellent science for impact, carried out by partnerships with strong emphasis on capacity building to fulfil CIMIT's mission to improve livelihoods through maize and wheat science. Central to this approach is our integrating philosophy, one CIMIT, which ensures that we work towards a shared mission and vision. Now, I'm sure you will all see how this, uh, this statement has echoed through, right through to today. Uh, and if you change CIMIT for CGIR, that is exactly uh, where we, and I'm, I hope you allow me to still say we, because that's how I still think about uh, CIMIT and the system, uh, very much as, uh, as a very important part of, of my own life. So that strategy was developed uh, in very close, it, it was a very, um, a very uh, disciplined exercise and it was developed in close collaboration with the board and as such, uh, we were all quite, quite closely involved and we were very um, uh, committed to, to achieving exactly what, what it said in there. I think the other thing to say about that strategy is that when we set it in 2017, there were a lot of things we didn't know, but it has been able to be very agile in its implementation, uh, which I think has been hugely uh, contributing to its success. The second thing that uh, Martin, I remember about you is your always your commitment to staff well-being and to uh, operational effectiveness as well, but 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 really that staff well-being uh, was was key, and we we had some very good staff surveys. Um, by good, I mean there was extremely high participation, and there were some. <clears throat> it was really much more than a box ticking exercise for staff. We we received some excellent. Um, suggestions for how things could be improved and I think that was uh, that, that was key. One of the things that came out of that was FISO, which I think uh, you have mentioned uh, in your address, um, uh, which was this initiative to go to a much more focused efficiency, efficacy and service orientation within CIMID. And for, for, for several years after that, we would receive these um, strong reports of progress and I remember that that pretty much everything that was envisaged to be achieved by that program was achieved but the beauty of it was it involved all staff pretty much everyone knew what FISO was and that staff well-being was was absolutely critical to to, to the success of, of that particular initiative. Other highlights for me were the systems approach, the wheat and maize agri-food systems research program, uh, which and, and then the excellence in breeding platform, all precursors to, to the RAFs initiatives that we have today. Um, CIMIT as a benchmark for strong center performance and systems, I think is another, another area that I'm very proud of that we, um, that we achieved under your guidance and, and, and tutelage. Uh, very often in meetings with other centers, uh, we were able to, to offer thought leadership and, and offer examples of how, uh, how things were being done at CIMID and perhaps those could be, those approaches could be adopted at other centers as well and indeed at the system level as a whole. Um, I don't know if anyone's mentioned BISA uh, before I came online, um, the Borlaug Institute of South Asia. I think has been a, a, a beacon in its own right of what can be done with a, a take it to the farmer um, approach. Um, I'm, I remember my early visits to 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 be signed its uh, its three farms, which even back in the old days were were very impressive. Uh, they started out as being just farms. We didn't have a lot of systems. I still remember on my first visit there was. Um, a, a desktop computer in a corner somewhere in a meeting room, and that was it in terms of the the the, the technology that that Visa had. But somehow it managed to um, to to work without a lot of those uh, corporate supporting 
functions other than, of course, the, the support that it was getting from, from Mexico. But I think one of, uh, one of the, the big achievements, Martin, was to bring BISA into the, uh, the 21st century, as it were, in, 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 in terms of, of the corporate support that we built there, as well as the excellent science that had always been there from the start. Um, and finally, for me, um, your thought leadership, Martin, has always been incredible. Um, it was, you know, it was always what would Martin think about this? How could, how would he approach that? And when you weren't uh, necessarily always there, because you were often somewhere else in 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 the world than than Simid HQ, I think um, uh, your finger on the pulse was certainly always still very very much felt. So in term, at, at a more personal level, um, I would like to thank you for your working with the board, certainly over these, those eight years that I was there, and in particular, the last five as chair. Uh, I think we had a very, um, a very cordial, but also very trusting and fun uh, relationships. And um, I remember, like many, most others, uh, a lot of um, running through airport type um, activities sitting on a plane trying to <laughs> to prepare the next uh, the, the next report to the board or, or whatever it might be um, I think your effort in taking the board to all the various summit locations um, in India Kenya Nepal Turkey Zimbabwe including a certain farm that we just heard of and I fondly remember the birth of that little calf summit and I'm very pleased to hear that um, that Simit is still alive and having her own babies now. That's a, that was a, a lovely touch from, from Lindy Way. Um, I think board effectiveness, uh, uh, the building of mutual trust between management and the board is, is something that you were keen on. And, and I would like to say that, that, that you did achieve, um, Martin, and for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, and finally, that, that, um, that energy even through illness, uh, I remember the 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 horrible news when when we received it. But um, uh, you never really uh, were absent, uh, even though there were others. Uh, and I, I think Marianne is on the line, and she did a fantastic job uh, standing in for you physically, but I think mentally you you were always still there, even through the worst times. So in conclusion, um, I have very much enjoyed working with you. I have enjoyed talking about family as well and our shared stories of, of, of grandchildren. Delighted to hear that there are now three in your case. And I wish you, and in particular Ninka as well, whom I had the pleasure of meeting several times, uh, all the best for the next 10 years and beyond. And I know that this won't be the last that we hear from you. Thank you, Martin, and all the very best. We appreciate Nicole uh, for, uh, for, for her, her kind words and also for her reflections. Now, I would like to invite Maya Raya Sekaran, Managing Director, African Region and Senior Director of Biodiverse Agroecosystems at CGR for her car intervention. Thank you so much. Maya, your micro was muted. Apologies. It's wonderful to be part of this celebration and I hope all of you can hear me. And congratulations, Martin, for your tremendous leadership and what that translated into impact on the field and improving people's life around the world. And I first met Martin 10 years ago from a very distance when Martin was the system board chair. And then I had the opportunity to work very closely with Martin during the preparation of the CGIR strategy, research and innovation strategy in the beginning of 2020. And that really started at the peak of the COVID. So we had a, we built a strong relationship and collaborative uh, process uh, along with Melissa Wood and very much a virtual working, working space. Every single day I get up in the morning and I do the call with Martin. 
So we really worked super closely in preparing that uh, research and innovation strategy. And uh, very recently, and I'm also working very closely with Martin as the senior director for the Vindaras area. Uh, I want to highlight three things about Martin, hopefully it won't be repetitive. And we are in the, as Martin mentioned, it's been a How many uh, Maya, again, we are losing you. Okay. Okay, Apolog we can hear you now. Sorry. Apologies. Okay. Uh, it's, it's in a very difficult, you know, very challenging times in the last three years. And it's very easy for team members to be distracted about uh, many things that's going on. And I think Martin always have the heart in the right place. And Martin always brought the team back to saying, we are as a science organization, we are for science for impact. So thank you, Martin, for keeping uh, the heart in the right place and also always inspiring the team to be really looking forward. And when we are confused, really think about why we are here for and the mission of the organization. And the second thing I want to mention is about incredible passion and energy for bringing partners together. Again, at the thick of the COVID and the peak of the COVID, we had to build a strategy of the CGR together and they had very limited opportunity to really interact with our partners face-to-face. -face. So Martin took extremely uh, extreme care in making sure that he reached out to some of the key partners and to the very extent, very regular interaction with them. And we did a you know, collaboration with partnership survey and making sure that our partners have been heard and we took all of their inputs in forward in building a strategy together. So always, Really thinking about CGR is not just about centers, CGR is about collaboration with a broad spectrum of partners around the world, including national partners, private sector, and the public sector and university. So thank you always for reminding us to do that and you know being very strong advocate of that partnership throughout your career with CGR Martin. The third is very personal to me from events. I had the great fortune to work with Martin very closely in two occasions. And thank you, Martin, for being very approachable. Um, as a leader, you've always shown an open door. I could reach out to you at any time, be a sounding board and ask questions and disagree and oh no, so we can have an open discussion about it. And I think that's very, very critical for uh, you know, the generation that's coming up in the IR. So thank you for doing that um, in a very open way. I always appreciate you doing that and overall, it's been an amazing time, and I want to say thank you so much for um, giving the opportunity to work with you. It was a pleasure working with you, and uh, I wish you um, and your family a great uh, time ahead. I did talk about your three grandchildren, and I recently also learned about your passion for DIY and creating new tools and toys. So I believe you find some new DIY tools and creating some new tools and uh, toys for your grandchildren and enjoying the time with them. So thank you so much. Thank you, Maya. I would like to invite Oscar Ortiz, Senior Director of Crop Based System at the CGR. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this important event in which we celebrate Martin's uh, highly significant scientific career. Martin has been a scientist, a professor, forming new generations of scientists, a research leader and manager, among several other roles, and has succeeded in all those roles. What I can highlight in his long and exceptional career is that he's a systems person, a true believer that unless we address the current challenges of our society, with system lenses, the solutions would not generate the expected impact. And this is particularly true for the new one CGIR research and innovation strategy. Actually, the systems perspective is what connected both Martin and I since we started to interact about a couple of years ago. During the complex process of designing the one CGIR new structure, the portfolio, the global science groups, especially the Resilient Agri-Food Systems Group, which we call RAS. For nearly two years, a group of volunteers joined Martin in the effort of making RAS a reality. Martin had a clear vision 
of building an enabling environment for scientists from different centers, the Alliance, to work together. And that is why from the beginning, the priority was to have a functional portfolio of initiatives with clear priorities and system approaches. More recently, and more formally in my role of Senior Director of Crop-Based Systems within RAFS, we have continued supporting the science teams to deliver their commitments. We are happy to see that the initiative portfolio is generating results truly beyond the sum of its parts, which in systems thinking language is the key emergence of the one CGI. The RAFS Science Group is extremely excited to see scientific teams from the one CGIR and known CGIR partners, which did not have the chance to work together in the past, now beginning to be part of common teams with shared objectives, discussing, planning, and generating results together. This is just the beginning of the process. We are aware of that. And the RAFS team will continue working hard to realize Martin's systems vision and the role of RAFS as an integrated mechanism for innovations coming from other science groups to realize their potential at field, farm, and landscape level. I would like to thank Martin uh, for the opportunity to be part of his team, to learn from him during this time. And what I can promise him is that we will continue doing our best to realize the potential of systems thinking for RAFS and the one CGIR. I wish all the best for Martin and his family in the future. I'm sure we will continue counting off his experience, his wisdom, uh, towards the one CGIR. Thanks again for the opportunity to be part of this ceremony. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Oscar, for your valuable message. Now we would like to present the remarks of Esan Mohamed, World Fish Director General and CGR Senior Director of Aquatic Food Good Systems. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we gather to say goodbye to Martin, who is retiring after a long and distinguished career uh, across the CJR, Bid and Simit, Erie, and more recently as a uh, Managing Director for RAFS as well. So personally, despite only knowing Martin for a short while, I feel like I have known him for ages. Uh, in fact, uh, we have shared so many meals together, be it in Egypt, Malaysia, Italy, and Mexico, that I think we've covered almost every cuisine uh, in the world. Uh, I've come to appreciate uh, Martin's humble and respectful uh, nature. Uh, as well as his passion for science and commitment to making a positive impact. He has been a driving force in infusing passion into our meetings, be it with donors and partners, and his dedication has helped to establish and nurture many key relationships that will continue to benefit our organization for years to come. Martin's retirement um, marks um, the end of an era uh, and we will miss him dearly. But let's be honest as well. I'm sure many of us, we are also a little bit jealous of his newfound freedom to spend all day in his pyjamas and eat ice cream straight out of the tub as well. But in all seriousness, though, uh, on behalf of everyone from our end here at World Fish, I want to express our uh, deepest gratitude to Martin um, and for his service and wish him all the best in his retirement. Uh, we know that he will continue to make an impact in whatever he chooses to do next. And we look forward to hearing about his adventures as well. So Martin, thank you for sharing your passion, commitment, and time with us. Our shared meals in Egypt, Malaysia, Italy, and Mexico have been unforgettable, and we will miss your sense of humor, and most importantly, your good nature as well. So best of luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you for all, more of all of us here, all the way from Penang, Malaysia. Now I 
would like to invite Joe Sweden, Managing Director, System Trans Transformation at the CGR. Um, hello, can you hear me? All right. Uh, I'm, I'm on the road, so my connection is not perfect, but I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I, when I was listening to Martin giving his talk, I thought it was vintage uh, Dr. Kropf. Uh, as I have learned to know him first as an experienced leader, then as a colleague, a bit distant in the beginning, and then uh, increasingly closer, and then as a friend, I think, at this point. Uh, I got to know Martin early 2020 in the meetings of the DGs and then as the leader of the famous stack 2, the research stack, uh, where Martin and uh, Melissa Wood were very energetic, often too energetic for the rest of the TAC to follow uh, uh, where he was taking us. And so it was a very dynamic um, experience. Later in mid-2021, both of us became global directors of a science group, now managing directors first with Barbara and then with Sonia later. And this has been since a very intense period of collaboration between uh, the three of us, the two of us. Uh, Rob said, uh, Rob Bertram in the beginning said he had 400 emails from you. I think 4,000 or 40,000 is closer to the, the number that I uh, have exchanged in the meantime, or we have exchanged in the meantime. So there's been a lot of speakers already and many of the things I had listed here have been mentioned. So also in, um, I'm just going to not repeat uh, many of the things. So the issue, passion, energetic, a dynamic leader, all of these things I also uh, have experienced. Um, a very strong commitment to science. I think that was very clear from the presentation also. Believe in the science and particularly what CIMIT and the CGIR can play for development for farmers around the world also came out very, uh, very strongly, very clearly. Two points which has been maybe a bit less uh, ma uh, mentioned is I think the strong insistence on efficient management of organizations. I have uh, learned that this is really important in, in um, uh, Martin's mind and I agree with that. And he has in many cases, many times over the past uh, years uh, emphasized this. Uh, also team spirit. I mean, the, so many times he told me, yo, we have to work as a team on this and uh, both for me and him and, and Sonia or Barbara, but also broader for the whole leadership, I think. And Sonia referred, uh, sorry, Claudia referred to the, the godfather of the RIIs. And I think that's actually a very good description. I, I was I, better than I had described it here. I also should mention the, the inverse relationship. Sci science actually energizes Martin. It's not that Martin energizes science. So often when we had uh, frustrating training meetings on budgets and management, then he would go and talk to the scientists and he came back full of energy. Oh, this is great. We have to uh, be inspired by this. So going forward, uh, Martin is going back to Wageningen, but this is, I know how to pronounce it properly, Claudia. So, but um, he's not really going back. It's like he's never really left there. I think it's just a re reunification, if you want, from them. Uh, people have sent uh, the time with the family. Family has been very important also. For, I know it's for you. You've often talked it, uh, warmly about your family, Nink and the children, but especially the grandchildren have come up in many conversations. Personally, Martin, I have no idea how I'm going to manage this uh, or continue. I'm not managing it myself, obviously, but continues to co-manage this without you. I don't even want to start thinking about it because uh, without your ideas, passion, energy, commitment, it's going to be a different world, I think. Uh, finally, my last point is that we've all become a bit more super and more honest working with you. Whenever you wanted to reinforce something, it was to be honest, to be was added to the sentence, and you were, uh, and things became super, super exciting, super interesting, super important, even to the extent that I started using the word, which I never had done before. So, dear Martin, in conclusion, to be honest, I thank you for your super friendship, your super leadership, and your super contributions. I don't think really I can wish you uh, good luck on your next step because I expect a couple of hundred emails and many hours to be uh, with you in the next couple of months. But thank you very much for everything. Thank you, Joe, for, kind, for your kind message. Now, with this, we conclude this emotive ceremony and farewell seminar. Thank you for being here today. We wish our best endeavors for Martin Cross family, our best success and best wishes. 
and we really appreciate that um, your time that you took the time to be here. So thank you very much and have a good afternoon.